All right, guys, if you are new to Far Driver and you open the app for the first time, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my God, what is all this stuff? Well, I have a solution for you. Ryan Goodyear from Econic Cycles has put together kind of a beginner's Bible, if you will, to Far Driver setup. I'll put a scroll right here for you and a link in the description for where you can get this document yourself and go through the steps with me as you watch this video. I want you to know that this episode is not razor specific. This episode can be applicable to anything that's running a Far Driver controller. So be it your razor, your crazy cart, your Bamoto, your Mototech, whatever, it could be anything. Anyway, enough blabbing. Let's get this thing in the shop. Let's get the tune in. All right, guys, so here we are. You're probably in a similar situation. You got the far driver installed. You, you got your throttle installed. You got the on off switch and all the things done. But now that your far driver is installed and connected, now what? <laughs> Next thing you should do is go down to the description and open the link. It's got a document in there, the one I talked about earlier, that's gonna go through the steps that we're gonna go through in this video. One thing I wanna make clear is if you purchase a far driver from the Econic Cycles website, you also get support for that unit, right? So if you buy a far driver from there and you have a problem with it or you need help tuning it or something beyond the scope of what we're gonna go through in this video, feel free to go ahead and reach out to Ryan Goodyear. I'll put his contact information right here. You can get him on the Facebook Messenger. He will walk you through the steps of setting this up past what we're gonna do in this video. In this video, we're gonna get you rolling, but there's a plethora of other steps that you can take to make your bike faster, more responsive, or to act a certain way, depending on the riding characteristics that you're expecting, whether that's street or off-road. But anyway, let's get into the document. Let's get into these steps. The first thing you gotta do is go into the app store, whether or not you're using an iPhone or an Android phone, go ahead and get the Far Driver app. It looks like this, download that. The first thing you're gonna have to do is put in your email address. It's gonna ask you what that is, and then you're gonna hit submit. What it's gonna do, it's gonna send you an email and it's gonna have a six digit code in there. Once you get the email from FarDriver, take that six digit code, put it in the app, and then you're gonna hit registering. And that'll allow the controller to, to bind with your app so that you can make the changes that you're gonna to wanna to make specifically to your controller. We have our controller is connected to our app. And the next thing we get to do is go to the communications tab. And I have a screen here that I'm working on as I'm speaking to you guys so that I can project this up so that we can kind of go through this together. So what we're gonna do is you're going to connect your controller to the app. So you're gonna see here, you're gonna see WAN Q. So you're gonna hit that and you're gonna to wanna to connect. So connect right here, boom. And now it's connected. Then go over here to connected, click here to bound. So click that and it'll say bound controller and then it'll have a serial number, hit bound. And then it'll say bound device. So you're good to go. Now you're able to make changes to the controller through the app. So now that we're bound and the app is connected to the controller, we're gonna go over to the Paris tab on the bottom left of the screen. We're gonna open up the NBLE setting right there. This is kind of the more, the more advanced setting. A couple of things you need to know here is the pole pairs of your motor. And in the document, it says what the pole pairs are for very common motors. If you don't know what your pole pairs are, Google your motor and find out what the pull pairs are. Or if you know what the magnet count is, you can take that number, divide it by two, and that'll give you your pull pairs. Anyway, but you need to know your pull pairs, you need to know what your voltage is on your battery, and you need to know what your max line current is. In addition to knowing all that stuff, you need to know what your low voltage cutoff is. So if you're running a 72 volt battery, a 60 volt battery, a 48 volt battery, you need to tell the controller what the safe level is to protect that battery so that it stops producing power so it doesn't damage your components. So I'm, in my application, we're gonna start here at the top under the parameters section. I have a QS165 motor. That's a five pole pair motor. So if you have a different one, just click on the five right there or the number that's present when you start up the controller and select how many pole pairs your motor has. Mine has five, so I'm gonna keep it at five. My voltage is 72 volts and we'll just keep that at 72. If yours is different, you can just touch it and input whatever yours is. So my max line current for my battery is 240 amps, but this controller is only good to take 200. So I'm gonna make mine 200. It's already set at 200, so we'll just leave that there. If you have a issue with your motor spinning the wrong direction, if you look over here at the motor direction one or zero, you will get 
a selection of zero or one, just pick the one if you want your motor to go forward on like a dirt bike application. But if you are mounting your motor in a different configuration, say your chain is on, on the opposite side, or you're running a four wheeler or whatever your, your application is, you can use that one and zero and that'll change the direction in which your shaft spins. So, and then after we do all that in the very top section, we're gonna go down to protect. Our low voltage protect right now is set at 61.1. I'm just gonna go with what the document says. And I'm reading here, 72 volt battery, the low protect is 63.1. So I'm gonna go with that, 63.1, okay. And then that's gonna be pretty much everything that I have to do before we do the auto learn process. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top, make sure everything looks good. And then I'm gonna hit save down here on the bottom. Save, you'll hear, like, you'll hear a beep beep, boom. So now that we're there, the settings have been saved. Now we can hit the return to simple mode at the bottom of the screen. And then I'm gonna go over to the graph. So our graph right here, and this is where we're gonna implement the auto learn feature. On the very bottom, you're gonna see auto learn. And when you do this auto learn, the way I have always done it or that I have been coached to do it, which is the best way, is to remove the chain from the motor so that the controller gets an accurate reading of the RPMs that the motor is turning without having to turn a mass, if you will. So anyway, we're gonna go to auto learn, enter self-learning status, we'll hit enter. Now, listen to that tone. Beep, beep, beep. That's the auto learn signature tone so that let you know that you're an auto learn. From here, we'll take the throttle and what I would do is have your bike up on a stand somewhere safe, because this is gonna spin really fast, forwards and backwards, and it's gonna do some things. Anyway, just be in a safe area when you're doing this. So I'm gonna full send the throttle, and here we go. Okay, so we ha I held the throttle down, it went forward, it went back. You, got, you can watch the gauges. Sometimes if you're doing this for the first time, your motor might sound a little gravelly, but as the auto loading process is taking place, it's kind of figuring out where it is and it's gonna smooth out that motor. We did get a throttle issue, which once it verified that the system was okay, it removed the X and it gave me a green check, which is bueno, so good on that. And one other thing here, guys, after you've done the auto learn process is recommended that you do is go over to the graphs page and look over here at the motor stop. Under that, you have a gauge and it says throttle. Mine says zero slash 0 0.79. So what we wanna do is go over to our parameters. I'm gonna open up the NBLE tab and I'm gonna look at what my throttle is set at. Right now, my low throttle is set at 0.97. And per the document that I'm reading off of for this, it says that the throttle low should be 0.1 to 0.15 over what that initial number was on the graph, which was 0.79. So 0 0.79, you add 0 0.1, 0 0.89, 0 0.9 ish. We'll go over to the parameters. What did I say that it was? 0.9. So it, it figured it out. And what this does is it just eliminates dead space in your throttle as you're giving the motor the, the, the twist, right? And sometimes you might not have to do anything to the low throttle setting, just depends on kind of your motor and your controller. But anyway, something to keep in mind. Also too, if you have a motor and you are, have a temp sensor, not all motors have a temp sensor. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna go back to simple mode and then I'm gonna open up the graph. Right here where it says MOS temperature and motor temperature, those two numbers should be really close. Sometimes you're gonna get a MOS temperature that's gonna be you know, the ambient temperature of wherever you are now, but your motor temperature is gonna be you know, 100 degrees difference. That's not good, that's not what we want. So if that is your case, then just head over back to the parameters, go back into the advanced settings, open the temperature sensor tab, and scroll through these. There's seven of them in here. Scroll through these and then check back on your graph page to see if that MOS temperature and that engine temperature are really close, you know, within a degree or two. If the disparity is large between the two numbers, then you're probably on the wrong setting. So just troubleshoot with that. It all depends on your motor but, and the sensor that it has, but something to keep in mind. But anyway, so that's the base tune, guys. We got it running. I'm gonna put the chain back on it. Let's take it outside. Let's ride it. Let's see what kind of speeds we get just on a base tune. After this, 
If I wanna go faster, there's other things I can do, the RPMs, the phase amps, you know, I can get a hold of Ryan and then I can have him do a, a specialized tune for this motor controller and battery. Cause even though you might have a similar setup, the tune itself could be completely different or there are some different settings that you might need in order to achieve the goals that you're looking for with your electronics. Anyway, let's get on the road. guys so i got the bike up to about 63 64 miles an hour and that's just on a base tune and just full disclosure my battery right now is about 50 percent so i think that if i was to have a full battery and i put a actual tune on this thing i might call ryan goodyear to have him set me up with a tune and maybe i'll make a video on that about how the tune affects the bike after you've just done the auto learn and the kind of gains that you can get and expect with certain voltages that you have and controllers that you have the other thing I want to mention to you guys is the Econic Cycles website is basically the one-stop shop for everything Far Driver. If you go over there, check it out. If you use the keyword Voltron 5 at checkout, you will get 5% off your entire order. All right, guys, so now you have your Far Driver. It's tuned. You've been riding, but there's more to be had with that Far Driver. You can go to the Facebook group, Far Driver Tuning for E-Bikes. I'll put a scroll here so you guys can see what it looks like. And I'll also put a link in the show notes so you guys can go directly there. Or you can go to VoltronWatts.com, access the Facebook group through there, as well as other Razor specific Facebook groups for support and technical help. Remember, keep in mind, check out the Econic website for your far driver needs and tuning services from Ryan Goodyear. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later.